So this is a review of the film Dunkirk, Christopher Nolan's latest movie for 2017. His last one being Interstellar, 2014. So as many of you know, I put a video out about a year ago. Maybe not quite that long ago, but it was pr probably about that long actually. Just announcing that I was really excited because I'd heard the news that Christopher Nolan's next film project was Dunkirk. And I did a video, which I've got a link to in the description, where I talked about, at the time I talked about what I wanted to see from a Christopher Nolan war film and all the things I was hoping for, for that business and the fact I was a fan of Christopher Nolan's films, all that stuff. So many of you will probably have seen that video, many of my subscribers at least, so you'll probably want to know what I think of the film, which I think... Most people have probably now seen, if they're interested in it, because it's been out about a week now. So I've seen it twice, I'll say that, because I, I'm not one to review stuff or even form much of an opinion until I've really let it absorb, uh, I've really absorbed it and I've seen it multiple times or I've seen it once and really had time to think about it. I, I don't like making snap judgments, I really hate coming out of a cinema and sort of being forced to make a make a stance on whether or not something was good or bad or whatever. So, it's, yeah, I saw it. I, so I, the first time I saw it, which was a week ago, um, I was, I, I walked out, I'll be honest, I walked out with mixed feelings, actually. Um, I wasn't really sure what I felt. I walked out of it and I felt to myself that it wasn't quite the film I wanted to see because it's not a conventional war film. That's the first thing I will say about this film. I don't think anyone really expected Christopher Nolan to make a 15 or 18 rated Saving Private Ryan style movie. But I was hoping for a bit of that. I was hoping for a bit of good old combat, as they say, if you know what I mean. Like, just a bit of infantry combat and stuff. But you don't really get that in this film. It, it becomes quite clear. I mean, not initially, actually, but after about 15 minutes into the film, it becomes clear that this isn't going to be a conventional war film. This is a sort of impressionist, art house style film. It's really a film about an event. It's not really drama driven. It's it's that sort of thing. It's, it's quite unique, really. I can't really think of many other films that have really gone down that route. But anyway... So like I said, I, I came out of it feeling a little bit disappointed and I, I thought to myself, well, in a way I felt like it was almost disrespectful to the veterans of Dunkirk to make a film like that. I was thinking maybe he should have just made a conventional war film. But I went away and thought about it and I woke up the next, in the morning and I was like, you know what, actually, yeah, that had some great scenes in it. There were moments of real tension. There were some really impressive scenes some particularly standout moments and all really to do with the aerial dogfights i think that was really the main thing about the film that stands out for me the spitfires flying in formation and and the the, the combat with the the german luftwaffe mostly the Messerschmitts, and i think there was a hindcore in it at one point but it, it it didn't really seal the deal i thought to myself i really do need to go and see that again I waited a few days and I saw it again on Friday night, so a couple of days ago. And it it yeah, it it certainly worked more for me seeing it the second time. It 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 really works for me in fact. It, it and I think I think it's a brilliant film. It it isn't the film I was expecting. And I, I was basically expecting a conventional war film, but now I've really gone away and thought about it. I actually quite like the way Nolan tackled this particular event, this particular World War Two battle, because what it what it does really is it 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 reinforces that Nolan is is a a kind of auteur filmmaker. Really, he 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 does things the way he wants to do them, and the studios can't really interfere with his process. He's basically been given a hundred million dollars to make a war film, and he's gone away and made it. And he's made it the way he wanted to make it. And there, there, there doesn't seem to be much in the way of compromise. He had a vision. I think he even wrote the screenplay as well. So, 
he, this is his project essentially and and it works it's it's very it's very good film it's got some great scenes i think mark rylance is particularly good in it and interestingly what many people don't realize is i think i'm not 100 percent on this but i suspect christopher nolan based a lot of mark rylance's character on a real life character which you should go away and go away and read up on called charles Lightler, who i think was one of the last or i think he was the most senior surviving officer of the titanic at the time of dunkirk so he he was a real veteran an old hand a naval naval old hand so he kind of knew he was a he was a wise a wise character shall we say and and he plays that in the film he's a he's a he's a really adept seaman and very astute and very aware of the german aircraft and things and he, he just plays a very good everyman style period type man very brilliant brilliant character really spot on really well observed by christopher nolan i think that particular character and then you've also got obviously tom hardy in the in the spitfire he's he's fine doesn't do a lot to be honest it, it, as far as i'm concerned but he's very good in the film and you've got Killian Murphy kind of playing a, a shell shot troop. And when I first, infantry officer, I think he is, when I first saw that film, when I first saw Dunkirk, I, I didn't really understand what the point of his character was. But when you see it a second time, I'm, I, I, haven't, I kind of missed it the first time, but basically when you see it a second time, you realise that there's a flashback sequence where you see him before the tragic incident, which caused him to basically lose his mind, lose his head entirely. And he's very, very collected, very calm, very gentlemanly, very officer class in his mannerisms. And he seems to, to be on the ball and, and all the troops are rallying around him. And then something happens, which you never actually see on screen. And he's a broken man at that point when he gets picked up by Mark Rylance and his, and his crew and his sons on the boat. So I thought that was very good. Uh, and, and I understand why his character is in the film now. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a good character. And who else have you got in it? Well, you've got Kenneth Branagh, who's a very accomplished director and, and thespian, I think. And, he, and he's very good in the film. He just, he just plays a... I think he's... I'm not entirely sure if he's an admiral, but he's a, he's a high-ranking naval officer. And he, he's good in the film. You never really see him do much. He just stands around on the pier, but he's just observing and overseeing the, the evacuation, making sure that everything's going to plan talking at length he's very much the exposition character of the film i would say along with the uh, the army lieutenant or whatever the rank of the rank is lieutenant i should say considering the fact this is a british film set in britain or set amongst the british troops but anyway it, it, yeah they're all good characters essentially and they all play their role uh, the, the harry styles I, I only just know who he is, and he I thought he was fine. I thought he played the role pretty well, as far as I'm concerned, as the sort of the infantryman bumbling around trying to escape and con continuously kind of like not quite making it away until the end. I loved a bit at the end as well. I loved the, the scene in England where they're on the train. Not many people touch on that, but that was all very, very well done. And that all started to feel a little bit more conventional, actually, to me. That started to feel like a conventional World War Two film at that point, where you've got the troops arriving in England, uh, uh, getting mobbed by all the civilians at the train station with beers and stuff, and you've got the old man kind of acting very shyly around them, presumably a World War One veteran who's kind of aware that it's all going to happen again in his lifetime and he's seen it all before, that kind of thing. Mark Rylance is very good in that because there's a scene where a troop confronts one of the RAF guys and says, where were you? Which is what happens in Dunkirk. All the guys on the beach just assumed the RAF had abandoned them, but that was very far from the reality, which a recent documentary I watched on BBC in the UK exposed. The RAF did a massive amount of fighting during Dunkirk and kept the Luftwaffe at bay, which was actually partly why Dunkirk was such a, such a successful operation, because the Spitfire predominantly was really, really ploughing into the Luftwaffe, and I think it was a two-to-one kill ratio or something like that, so the Luftwaffe just couldn't sustain it. But anyway, there was a nice scene where Mark Rylance kind of acknowledged him and said, he knows where you were, you know, that kind of thing. 
that, and yeah, I can't think of any other characters. I've probably missed someone, but they're all very good. There's a I thought one character that no one's really talking about, and I don't actually know the name of the character, but he he was one of the Spitfire po- pilots who flew with Tom Hardy's character Farrier, or I think that was his name, character's name. But he was a, he was a blonde-haired guy, blue eyes, just looked very. He he kind of looked like your quintessential RAF pilot, really. And he was very good in the film, and and he was he actually got downed at one point and had to bail in the ocean. Only just made it out alive, and he was just excellent in the film. He was he, when he got on the boat, he was excellent overseeing the Spitfires and hoping for a, a victory in the air. So, yeah, and the film starts really well. There's a little bit of combat at the start, which I think just sets the tone. You don't. It's not really combat. You just hear some gunshots, very loud gunshots, and. And you kind of just get a sense of, right, this is, yeah, the enemy are closing in. I think that's really what that's all about. It's just a sense of being surrounded. But I did want to see a little bit more resistance from the Brits. I wanted to see some, and and they really, I mean, there was rear guard action. It wasn't just down to the, to the French, although the French were heavily involved. I think I would have liked to have seen perhaps a fourth act to the film. Because it was only a two hour long film. It could have been two and a half hours, really. Maybe a fourth act where there was a bit of rearguard action where the, the French and the Brits were holding up against some German infantry, maybe trying to probe the line, get through the town that you saw at the start, something like that. I would have loved to have seen that. Maybe just one or two tanks, maybe. Maybe not necessarily tanks, but just you know, just a little bit of combat, just a little bit of small arms combat. Didn't really get that, which was I thought was a real shame, actually. It does make me wonder if perhaps there was some, but it didn't survive the cut. But I don't think that's the case. I think perhaps it just wasn't ever conceived of by by Nolan, which I think is a shame. And also, I think I've I've read a lot of criticism about the scale of the film. It didn't actually seem very epic in scale, and I think the reason is is because Nolan opted to use entirely real boats and planes. A lot of the, I think all both the boats, in fact, were real boats from the time. They've all they've all been kind of looked after and maintained throughout the decades and they've um they were used during the 60th Dunkirk anniversary I believe so they've done the journey back to Dunkirk before and they did it again for the film and that's nice to know I mean I appreciate that Nolan wanted to capture all real stuff on screen but I do think perhaps we needed one or two shots more that really conveyed the scale of of the boat evacuation maybe some miniatures maybe some miniature shots because Nolan's very anti-CGI and I understand that but maybe we just needed some shots where you got all of the real boats on screen but maybe in the background we could have just had a painting or some very very light CGI touches just to give you that sense of scale but like I say you did you it's not like you didn't get the sense of scale because you did but not quite in the way that I was hoping for. But it really isn't a big deal. And at the end of the film, in fact, there are some pretty incredible shots from the Spitfire's perspective, where you see that entirety of the width of the beach and line after line of infantry waiting to get embarked on a boat. And uh, that was great. Yeah, yeah, that worked well, I thought. And that was that was an important shot because that felt like sealing the deal, really, that shot to me. And it was only a couple of seconds. You, If you'd have left the cinema and come back, you would have missed it just for a, a brief second, really. But it was important to have that shot in the film because it really conveys the, the, the scale of the evacuation. But I just think you needed more of that myself, personally. But it's not a criticism that many people have really picked up on. I don't think it's really that widely held that it's a particular issue of the film. So... Yeah, it's a good film. It's very good. It's um, I'm I'm still, but maybe, I don't know. I'm not inclined to call it a masterpiece. I have to say, I think it's it it just doesn't quite do it for me in terms of being a five star film. I would give it a four star rating if I was going to rate the film. I wish it was a five star film. I I I I feel almost like I need to see it a third time, in fact, because it. It is a very, it is an excellent film. I mean, I can't think of any other film that captures aerial combat in the same way as this film. 
the aerial combat is brilliant and and you and it all seems completely real it, it it is in no way overly cinematic it all just seems spot on and and the, the, it's great to see the, the the heavier bombers in the film the hind call and at one point i think a blenin bo bomber flies by but really that's just a a piece of iconic camera work it's not really the, the the bomber has no purpose in the film it's just in i think it was a recently refurbished blenheim bomber but it's great to see it and the, the the naval stuff's very good i mean the way the boats are shot as they're hit by torpedoes and, and bombs is is all very impressive but it's just not quite it's just not quite epic enough i don't think it just feels at times like it's just not quite large enough scale which is odd because the budget was very high it's not like the money wasn't there i think it all goes back to artistic decisions by nolan he just didn't want to embrace cgi he didn't want to go down the pearl harbor michael bay route of saying right let's just add some crazy explosions and stuff i mean obviously we don't want that in film oh, i don't anyway i want it to be based on realism but there's a balance. I think sometimes you need a little bit of spice to to, to do it. But yeah, the, the film works in many ways. It it and it, I think it's very it's very watchable for people who aren't necessarily going to be geeking out over World War Two stuff and aren't necessarily war film aficionados. I think it's just a film that most people will watch. People of all, most age, all, almost any age group, I would imagine, and and male and female. I think. I think it's just a captivating film in general, and 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 for me it's important because I think people will learn about Dunkirk. They they understand that this was a significant moment in, in history, and there are a lot of the friends I went with who watched it. He didn't know anything about Dunkirk, which I thought was quite. I found that quite frustrating, if I'm honest. But he watched it, and he he obviously now knows a fair bit about Dunkirk. But, I would I would suggest. I don't know. I just feel like it's it didn't quite capture it in the way I, I wanted it to be captured on screen. I kind of wanted it to be a bit more conventional. And and also I wanted it to be a bit more adult, really. I wanted a bit more gore. Um, I know that just sounds like a cliche sort of thing to say. You just want to see more gore in a war film. But I think sometimes it has its place. You need to, you need to see a bit of, bit of that. But Christopher Nolan isn't that kind of filmmaker. It's like with Inception, when he when he had the combat scenes in that. It's just it's almost like, just almost like an art. It's like a dance, really. It's not really anything other than that with Christopher Nolan. He's not really an action film director. It's not his style at all. He's more about tension. So that that's that's the way I see it. But anyway, it's a it's a great film, and it's it's for me it's uh, it's. It it really, it does don't it does the whole topic, the whole event of Dunkirk justice in my opinion, and and the, the timeline business I I had no issue with I, I it just worked for me the free, the land air sea business the one hour one week one day I thought that was quite good actually I thought that worked quite well because it it gave, it gave you a sense of the timelines that you'd be dealing with if you're on the grounds compared to if you're in the air because if you're in the air fuel is a major factor. And if you're on a boat, you, you again, it's you, you're whizzing across the channel essentially. You're there and back in a day. But if you're on the ground, the whole thing's going to last a lot longer. So that that worked well. That was very clever. I thought it's a very novel idea. So yeah, there you go. That th these are just some random thoughts on the film, really. I I would I would say yeah, it's it's great. Um, it just isn't quite isn't quite the film I was hoping for. But, but it's excellent, and it, it will certainly be a film that I'll be adding to my Blu-ray collection, which is not something I do much nowadays. Where I, I really don't buy many films now. But it, I think with Christopher Nolan, it's almost as if it's an impulse buy. It's just an insta-buy Blu-ray, really, Christopher Nolan films. But yeah, there you go. It's uh, If you've not seen it, definitely go and check it out. It's it's very good. For, um, but yeah, like I say, just not, for me, not not quite the masterpiece I think many people are saying it is. But I think it's very it's very believable, it's very realistic, and and it's almost like watching an event as opposed to a film, which is that which is a compliment, a huge compliment. 
it and the way the dialogue and the way certain characters speak it just seems to work it just seems to it just seems to feel authentic and of its time as well so there you go